What DE are you using? Use this DE. As you get into Linux, DE is one of the most common abbreviations you'll see. And you may be thinking at first, what is a DE? Well, it's a desktop environment. And you're like, okay, that's great, but what the heck is that? In this video, we're gonna talk about what a desktop environment is, and also discuss the key differences between a desktop environment and a window manager. A desktop environment is one type of graphical user interface that you can use in Linux. Some of the common ones that you'll hear about a lot are KDE Plasma, GNOME, or GNOME if you prefer, XFCE, as well as others like Mate, Cinnamon, others like that. Let's take a quick look at KDE Plasma, and I wanna to try to highlight a few things that we see here. So as you can see, we have, this is KDE Plasma. I can show that by going to information and you'll see Novara and then KDE Plasma and the versions. Here I've got Dolphin, which is a file manager. I've got Kate, which is a text editor. And I also have things like display configuration, a compositor, night color, and a whole lot of other options. If you've seen my KDE Plasma series uh, talking about some of these, you can see how deep some of these options go. So a DE can be thought of as a very batteries included. Everything is set up and you're ready to go with a desktop environment. So one of the key aspects there is compositor. A lot of times in videos, you may see things like transparency or window effects, things like that, that look really special, maybe even blurriness. And those are generally done by the compositor. And if a desktop environment or a window manager does not have a compositor, then it's not able to handle special effects like that. But the compositor is really just responsible for those effects. KDE Plasma has KWIN built in. Here's an area more specific to KWIN. It's got some scripts here that we could enable. I'm not gonna enable these at this time, but you'll get kind of the idea of what some things that KWIN may be responsible for. But again, transparency, that's a key one you'll see a lot in KDE Plasma. If you turn off your compositor, you will no longer have transparency. So if you want the nice transparent terminal, as you can see here, I pull up console. There is a transparent background, so I can kind of still see the things under it. If I turn off my compositor, I will not have any transparency. I'm a little hesitant to do that while I'm recording because I don't want it to screw up the recording itself. So I will be inserting a screenshot of what it kind of looks like with transparency versus without. And so then we come to what is a window manager? Well, here's the trick. Desktop environments often include a window manager in them. KWIN is the window manager for KDE Plasma. But what is a window manager? Well, it's generally responsible for managing windows. And so that's things like moving windows around, moving windows to a quarter or a half of the screen, anything like that, maximizing, minimizing. In fact, if we look back at Plasma one more time here, we will see that things like close window, increase opacity, expand window. All of these things are shortcuts specific to KWIN, which is the compositor and window manager for KDE Plasma. But in Linux, a window manager can actually be the primary display method for your computer. And window managers generally come in two flavors, floating window managers and tiling window managers. And let's briefly talk about floating window managers because they're not all that different from a desktop environment, but there's less built in by default. So you're gonna be seeing some video of ICE window manager, and it is a more stripped down kind of bare bones display environment. You're not gonna have a lot of the built in programs. You'll see more programs here because I have this running on the same system as KDE Plasma. So a lot of the Plasma apps are there. It's also generally lighter weight, but we'll talk more about some of these differences later on. Let's get to tiling window managers because I think that's where a lot of people see things and they're like, what is going on? So with a little magic here, we're gonna bring up a tiling window manager called Sway. All right, and this is Sway and you're like, okay, well, what's the difference? I don't understand. So if I start bringing up a terminal, you'll notice it fills the entire screen. But what if I bring up another one? Oh, there's two side by side. If I bring up another one and another one and another one, and as you can see, it just keeps on filling these and tiles them side by side by side. There are things that I can do to change this, and we'll take a look at how I would do that momentarily, but I also have multiple desktops. So I can go in here and I can open a browser. 
And then I can go here and I can open something else. And I can go to four and I can go to five and I can go to six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. There are 10 workspaces here and I can switch between them at my leisure and have things pulled up in a certain way. Maybe I need to have my terminal and my Firefox running side by side. I can do that. But then over here, maybe I want them full screen. I can do that. So I can have all of this at my fingertips, but the key is, it's all controlled via the keyboard. You don't actually have to use your mouse as much, except for something like a web browser. But everything, this is just, for example, Meta 1, or Meta 2, or 3, whatever. These are all just keyboard shortcuts. Control Enter brings up a terminal. Control Q quits that window. I can actually bring up three and it, you'll notice the cursor is in the far right. If I hold Control and then hit H, I can move to the left. If I hit L, I move back. I can cycle through these with just keyboard commands. If I move the mouse, it'll actually just focus whatever window my mouse is hovered over. I don't have to click into it, but that's inefficient. The entire point of the tiling window manager is to make it so that you can use the keyboard as much as possible. Or Windows D, Meta D, whatever you want to say, brings up a menu and you can bring up whatever application you have installed. I don't want to bring up another OBS Studio, but I could. So let's take a quick look at what this looks like. And so once we're in the terminal, we can say vim.config slash sway slash config dot d slash default. I believe it's the one we want. I'm going to increase the size here to make it easier to see. And so I've only made one change to this, and that is here at the bottom output HDMI A1 mode 1920 1080. That's just to make this screen 1920 by 1080. It looks a little awkward in 4K right now. In Sway, I probably just need to play around a little bit more to actually get this to configure like I need it to. But for the moment, I just wanted to do 1080p. But let's take a look at the rest of this just briefly. I don't want to go through the entire thing. Here's where it actually is going in and setting all of these keyboard shortcuts up. So set mod, mod four, mod four is the meta key. And so then here's where you're having the home row. And so it's moving left, down, up and right, just like Vim. Then you have things like audio controlled and term, and then you have the menu. It's figuring, do, setting up the configuration for the Wolfie menu, which is the meta D menu we saw right here. And then Here's idle configuration and everything else. There's a mod Q for killing a window, mod D for executing the menu, and then mod return for the terminals. And you can even make changes to this and say mod shift C to reload everything. But as you can see, this is very simple. This is not an actual programming language. And Sway is just one of many tiling window managers. There are some like Qtile that's configured in Python. There's another like awesome window manager, which I have a video on configured in Lua. Some of them are configured in actual programming languages. Others are like Sway, where you have a file out there and it, the syntax is very simple. But there are generally two key things that people want from a tiling window manager. Configurability and the ability to use the keyboard for most tasks. And that is the key things that people really like about tiling window managers because once you get in there and really set something up, you're gonna have a workflow that is entirely designed by you and just going to work for you. There's a lot of key binds to remember though. So some people aren't a fan of that. So let's talk about some of the differences here that maybe weren't as obvious from the video we just saw. First, with a desktop environment, the key things are everything is kind of there by default. It's kind of batteries included. You have any kind of widgets and things like that that you probably want already included. You'd have a suite of applications included. You have a setup that you're just going to install and it's gonna work. And today it doesn't matter as much, but desktop environments usually take up more storage space and also generally run on more RAM. Though to be fair, KD Plasma's RAM usage has gotten fairly low and it was considered the quote unquote, heavy desktop environment for a long time. And that is not really the case any longer. Most desktop environments are very lightweight. That's not to say that window managers aren't lighter. It's just that most of the time it's not a big deal anymore. But if you're running an older computer or you don't have a lot of RAM, 
that might be a consideration as to why you might want to run a window manager. One key difference here also is that desktop environments vary in their customizability. KD Plasma is very customizable. You can do a lot with it, while others aren't as customizable at least not as easily. Window managers, on the other hand, again, tend to use less RAM, tend to have less storage requirements. But again, in this day, it's not as big of a deal. But oftentimes they are very bare bones out of the box. They are not gonna often have, some of them don't even have a status bar. I believe Qtile and Awesome are two that do have it out of the box, but many do not because they expect you to configure everything to your needs. And that can be overwhelming for some people. That can be something where they don't wanna take the time to do that. You can of course go out and download somebody else's configuration and then hack on it a little bit to get to your own. However, all this configurability gives you a lot of power to determine what the window manager looks like and the workflow for it. For some people, the ability to configure something so completely is exactly what they're looking for because they can make an awesome looking setup for them or anybody else that wants to use it. Window managers generally do not have as many applications included though. It is a trade-off. It is something that you have to be prepared for if you want to run a window manager. What are your thoughts? What are some things that you're still curious about when it comes to desktop environments and window managers. Did any of these catch your eye or there's some that you're looking to try out? This to me is one of the coolest aspects of Linux is I can take my distro of choice and I can uninstall the desktop and reinstall a window manager or have a desktop environment and a window manager running side by side, depending on how they may conflict. I even have Sway and Hyperland running on the machine that you saw the Sway install on. And so ultimately it's something where there's a lot of configuration and customization that you can decide you wanna do. If you don't wanna do that though, the nice thing is you have some really awesome desktop environments to use. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and I will see you next time.